So in this video, we are going to talk about the pros and the cons of being in academia versus industry after your PhD. What is going on guys? Welcome to Natsini's vlogbook. Today, I'm hiding in my room here because it is meltingly hot outside with the outrageous 33 degrees Celsius and it's going to become 37 tomorrow. Summer is here in Canberra, finally. So I'm just hiding indoor, trying to stay cool. For those who are here the first time, I'm a final year physics PhD student here at the Australian National University. And because it is now my final year, I've been looking into jobs in the industry and academia for some time. So in the previous video right here, I think it's on this side, I talked about the paths beyond a PhD, but I forgot to mention what I think were the pros and the cons of these options. So we are going to get into that right now. Let's start with academia, which is something I am more familiar with and this is what I think are the pros. Freedom. You have a lot of freedom. There are many types of postdocs I've seen over the past years. Some are able to take up a project and go wild with it. Some exist to just help grad students and that is all they do and not much else, while the others are still quite green, too green to be completely on their own. And this really depends on a institutions and the personalities of the individuals and in this video we are going to talk about the first type which i think are the best type of postdoc and the most fun type of postdocs to be assuming you enjoy research if you decide to become a postdoc then this is what you will continue to do for the next five years or so at least you have a lot of freedom to explore the area of your interest but you have to choose the right research group that shares your interest because otherwise there will be no funding for it. Depending on the research group, you can probably still come in to work whenever you like, just like when you're a grad student. If you're a night owl and love the freedom of waking up whenever you like, just like when you're a grad student, make sure you talk to the research group before you join them, making sure they are okay with that. And when you are ready to move on beyond the postdoc, there are a couple of routes that you can take. At a big lab like LIGO, you can become a staff scientist and continue to do research you enjoy. Or you could become an assistant professor where your responsibility will start involving teaching classes while working on your research at the same time. Both paths allow for research freedom and you can dive deep into a problem without having to worry about delivering a product or anything groundbreaking and that's because that's how most researchers are. Job security. This one is going to be short because it only applies for uh, professors. Once you make it on a tenure track, you can't be fired unless you do stupid things like harassing your students or some shit like that. Getting a tenure track is pretty much the top of the academia job pyramid. And that's about it for what I think are the pros of being in academia. Now we are moving to what I think are the cons of being in academia. Job insecurity. Well, it's funny because I just talk about job security, but in reality, most people spend years hopping around from one postdoc job to the next, and not all of them make it to the tenure track. In fact, according to this paper published by MIT and Virginia Tech researchers, only one in about 7.8 PhD graduates will get a tenure track for the entire field of engineering. So yeah, getting a permanent job in academia is like a bloody pyramid scheme, basically. So an experimental physics postdoc get paid around 50k a year in the US while the job in the industry from the same area it would have offered nearly 100k or more per year. This number probably varies depending where you are. And if you spend many years as a postdoc, and don't make it to the tenure track, that's many many years of pretty lowish salary compared to the rest of the market. Especially if you are a less privileged non-white person that have responsibility back in your home country, that's 50k a year doesn't sound like a really good deal unless you really want to become a professor. Although I probably should mention that a postdoc salary in Australia is about 90k a year which is probably the highest postdoc salary there is and that's pretty much all I have to say about the pros and the cons of being in academia after your PhD. 
for now. Moving on to industry here, this is something I know less about, but here is what I've learned after talking to a couple of people who have worked in the Bay Area, starting with the pros. Higher pay. All the industrial jobs I have looked at seems to pay at least 80k a year at the entry level. And one of the people I've talked to score 120k salary a year with Apple after just one postdoc. This does not even include bonuses and stock shares, which goes up in value also every year. And not to mention that there are ladders to climb so your salary can continue to grow. Well-defined project. In the industry, you have a clear goal of what you need to get done and when you need to get it done. When somebody gives you problems to solve, they really want it solved. It's not just like, here's a problem, give it a go and see how it goes. That is very academia thing to do. So you don't wake up aimlessly every day, which is something I did a lot of time uh, towards the end of my operator job at LIGO Hanford, which can be pretty taxing on your mental health. And that's all I could think of about the pros of being in the industry for now because I don't know a lot now moving on to the cons less freedom. You have clear defined projects and clear defined goals. For example, take a look at this documentary from Project Makani, which is one of the Google X uh, projects. I'll post the link in the description. This is a project that one of my friends Tobin was involved in. The goal of this project was to harvest energy from the wind using kites. Although it looks like they were just goofing around, but in the end there are investors involved and the team was expected to reach a certain milestone by a certain deadline. Job insecurity. So from what I have seen in the industry, people can still change jobs every couple of years just like postdoc. But in the industry, I don't think that is necessarily a bad thing because moving on to the next job, you are able to command a higher salary because of the experience you have gained. But if you have to drag around kids, partners, dogs, that might get a little difficult. I don't really know when will the job in the in industry ever become permanent. Will it ever become permanent? I, I really don't know. There is no clear path to get to a permanent position like in academia. And that's really all I know about the pros and the cons of being in the industry. Sorry, that wasn't much. If you work out there in the industry, I would love to hear more about the pros and cons, what you like and what you don't like about being in the industry. Please comment down below. I would love to read your inputs. And that's pretty much some of what I know about academia versus industry, guys. It's something I wish university would tell me more about and I hope this video might be useful for some of you out there. And if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so YouTube may someday pay me for my coffees and instant noodles. I still need 4,000 watch hours, guys, to be able to monetize my videos. Well, that's it, guys. For those in the Northern Hemisphere, stay warm. And for those in the Southern Hemisphere, stay cool.